Now that we no longer have to talk about bleh every week, we put a lot of thought into which other horrible problems we should be targeting. But ultimately, we settled on the obvious choice, pandas. Sure, our pandemic is our biggest threat right now, but pandas are close behind, assuming you're going in reverse alphabetical order. Watch out, pancakes, we're coming for you next. In recent years, an anti-panda movement has built up, calling out these bears as adorable but useless. They're basically the royal family of animal conservation, curiosities that are held in captivity to draw attention and revenue while requiring lots of money and caretakers to get them to mate without inbreeding. Pandas are the poster child of the conservation movement, but they overshadow less photogenic species that are more vulnerable and might be more important to the ecosystem. There's huge biases uh, in which species get the most money. I'm going to guess it's the cute ones. Lee says if you're endangered or threatened, it definitely helps if you are also cute, majestic, or economically valuable. Right! We love cute animals while shunning their hideous, disgusting, slimy counterparts. Invertebrates like these represent 79% of all species, but only 11% of conservation literature. That preference is called taxonomic bias, and it leads us to favor the types of fuzzy, adorable species whose clumsy falls turn into viral videos. <laughs> oh no, look at you! No, that's so cute! Oh no, damn it! I'm part of the problem. Because of these biases, pandas get an ass load of money that could more easily help other species. I mean, of course, the real villain in this story isn't pandas, but humans. If we hadn't destroyed their habitat, we wouldn't need to repopulate them. But they're not making it easy for us to help them. For one thing, they're crazy expensive. Nearly all captive pandas are owned by China, which charges zoos annual fees of roughly a million dollars for each pair. Although you can get a modest discount on irregular factory seconds. Sure, a panda's arrival may get zoos the only press coverage that doesn't require a terrifying animal to escape, but many zoos lose money on pandas. The only way they break even is by selling off their snakes. Pandas are also expensive to care for. They have the digestive system of a carnivore, so they should be on a paleo diet, though if they're anything like humans, they never shut up about it. But instead, pandas have a very specific vegetarian diet that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. A pair of pandas can be as expensive to feed as all the other animals in a zoo combined, even though they mostly eat just one thing. The common name panda means bamboo eater, but because this member of the grass family is so low in nutrition, each bear spends up to 16 hours a day shredding 40 pounds of leaves and stems, and that is hardly enough to keep him alive. 99% of their diet in the wild is bamboo. And if that weren't pricey enough, the remaining 1% of their diet is pure uncut cocaine. The other main problem with repopulating captive pandas is that they're bad at what scientists call, um, doing it. To help things along, one of the vets uses a stem of bamboo to touch the glands under Yashwan's tail. Then it's held for Pinpin to sniff in the hope he'll find her scent arousing. But he is more interested in the bamboo itself. Most captive-born pandas seem to have lost the knowledge of how to get in the right position. And position is crucial because of the male's disproportionately short penis. That's right. Male pandas have one of the disproportionately smallest penises in the animal kingdom, as opposed to the big-dicked Canadian goose. <laughs> Talk about a honker! <laughs> pandas made it in the wild for millions of years, but it's hard to recreate those conditions in captivity. Meanwhile, female pandas are fertile for fewer than three days a year, and all pandas prefer to choose their mates rather than have some pando rando thrust into a cage with them. They also have a specific mating ritual where a female watches males fight for her, and threesomes are more or less the norm in the wild. A fact captive pandas responded to with, what? They are, let me out! If we wanna protect pandas, we should focus on protecting them in the wild and preserving their habitat, most of which overlaps with other species that could use protection. So we'd not only be saving these precious little fuzzy wuzzies, we'd also be saving some red ass woozles. And then maybe we could try to help more tore up from the floor up abominations around the world. Because all UGMOs deserve funding and respect. 
Ugmo's like the endangered yellow-faced bee. It's the only bee from Hawaii, although certain people say it's actually from Kenya. If that isn't enough ugliness for you, check out the eye eye. What, what? This is the eye eye, a kind of lemur found only on the island of Madagascar. Local legends cast it as a demon, a creature that can kill just by pointing a finger. The truth is more natural than supernatural, but they're right about the finger. Those fingers are scary in the wild, but they're even scarier when they show up at the nail salon. And then there's the proboscis monkey, which has the largest nose of any primate, but not of any goose, i.e. the big dicked Canadian goose. His nose actually keeps him from tipping over. Science. There are so many of these UGLY, you ain't got no alibi species on endangered lists, we don't have time to cover all of them. But you can learn more about them in all of their hideous glory by downloading Full Frontal's 2021 Wild and Ugly calendar. Each month features a different coyote fugly so revolting it will make you ask, why, God, why aren't we saving that busted ass sweetheart? How ugly are they? The Chinese giant salamander is so ugly. When it entered the ugly contest, they said, sorry, no professionals. <laughs> the axolotl is so ugly. When it goes to therapy, the doctor makes it lie on the couch face down. <laughs> Folks, the big headed turtle is so ugly. When its wife told him to take out the trash, she said, hello, I met you. <laughs> Humphead wrasse, so ugly. How ugly is it? When it wants a little alone time, it does its own mating call. The Titicaca water frog, so ugly, its own mother wouldn't eat it, wouldn't eat it. That's my time. Thank you so much. Go to samanthabee.com slash take action to download our 2021 UGMO calendar. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.